Hello everyone, Matt here from the Matt EXZY YouTube channel and it's the moment you've all been waiting for, or maybe one or two people have been waiting for. We're going to talk about the Rockmite QRP kit. And for those who don't know, just a brief introduction of what QRP means. QRP means uh, low powered transmissions on the amateur bands, in this case Morse code. So that's what QRP is. Now, what sets this apart from the other kit I've done, which was the Frog's QRP kit, is that it might notice that it has a little microcontroller here. And if we look at the back, it also has a serial port as well. When I first saw this about six months ago, I was like, what is going on here? Well, as it turns out, there is actually some software you can find, which I have found, by the way, and you can program that little microcontroller to act as a calling CQ uh, little program, and you push this button here, and it'll send it away a, a string of characters, which I will demonstrate in this video. And just for comparison in terms of complexity, this was the last QRP kit I made, uh, the frogs. They call it, the, they give these things little cute code names like frogs or pixie or whatever, and I've put that in here. Yeah, I've put that in here with the uh, Days Antenna Tuner Kit, which you might remember from the Cardboard Box of Mystery. So it's an all-in-one unit now. Again, I don't broadcast with it. I uh, just thought it was a neat little project to put together. As mentioned, there is a serial port on this. Uh, this is the serial controller. And this is the microcontroller. And I've hunted all around the internet the best I can, and I cannot find any data sheet on this guy that is in English. Very bizarre. So if you're a technically minded person and you're wondering what it is exactly, I'm getting a nice clear shot there. So we'll just briefly go over the sections of this circuit and um, what I understand is going on here. Uh, so this is key input, Morse code key input. These switches, uh, this switch as I just mentioned, launches the program inside the little microcontroller to send your CQ call. This switch, I think, it makes the call go slower, this makes the call go faster. Uh, that's not in explained in any instructions very well, and it took a little bit of playing around to work those two out. And these two here are more interesting. They adjust the side tone, so if you want... Uh, side tone is the tone you hear when you're keying Morse code, and you get that little bit of um, beeping feedback. Uh, through your earphones. Uh, you can adjust the tone up or down uh, thusly. Uh, the crystals on here, uh, this one I believe is setting the clock for the microcontroller, so it's 11 megahertz. Uh, this is the oscillator stage, as you can see, 7023 uh, kilohertz. All of these kits come with this frequency, and I believe in the US the general calling frequency I think is 7040. Or 70, 50 kilohertz thereabouts, and uh, other people put sockets right here. So you and well, we have to change these ones as well. Put sockets in so you can change the frequency. And this little chip here is doing some filtering and mixing, which is why it has two chips. Uh, this fellow here is an op amp. Um, it's actually being used as an audio amplifier, which I found quite odd. I was scratching my head over the schematic trying to work out exactly what it was doing. Um, now, the tricky part are these toroids. Uh, finding how to wind these guys, it looks pretty straightforward, and it is, but I'm not sure if I've done it correctly. Uh, there's an 8 to 2. Uh, this guy here has, I think, 4 or 5 windings overlapping twice. Um, so you end up with kind of 4 pins and two are twisted together like that, and then they just goes in. Now, these aren't the original, uh, actually, I made another Rockmite kit. The original toroids, uh, these low-pass filters that it comes with, um, are T37 cores. I swapped those out for T50 because word is, the quality of these toroids isn't the best, and I noticed uh, on testing, See, these are advertisers transmitting in 8 watts. I was getting around 2.5 watts, and swapping these guys out, I got up to 3 watts. But in all honesty, in terms of what's on here, I'm not sure how they're driving 8 watts out of it. Uh, so yeah, that's a basic overview. So, uh, the kits themselves, one came from Banggood, and one came from eBay. The one coming from 
uh, Banggood on the left here, it took a month and a half to get here, but I think that was Australian Customs. It sat in Customs for like a month, so that's their fault. Uh, the second kit from eBay was missing two transistors, and the one from Banggood had all the components with it, as well as instructions and a schematic. And as far as these kits go, missing two transistors, well, that's not too bad. So let's move on to a bit of a demonstration, and I will quit gas bagging. Okay, so first bit of the demonstration, uh, we'll just have a listen to those side tones uh, using these two little buttons that I just talked about. Uh, so normal, this is normal keying, by the way. So that's the range. Moving on to the software side of things, uh, you will need a computer with a serial port. Uh, I think some people have had luck using a USB to serial adapter. I'm lucky in that uh, my HP laptop does have a built-in serial port, so that's what we'll be using. Uh, when connecting this circuit up, the MO seems to be you connect the serial in first, if I can get a good focus there, and then you connect power, like that. And here it is, the fabled Rockmite software program. A lot of people have only been able to find it in Chinese, but I found the English version, and I forget where I got it from. I'm sorry. Uh, I should be using a screen capture program, but uh, you'll get the idea. Yeah, this is this this will work. Uh, so up here, you select obviously the the serial port that it's connected to. Uh, you can read if there's any message stored on the microcontroller. Read and write actually don't do too much, I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on with that. And write flash, I haven't been game enough to press that one because it might delete the program in the microcontroller. Uh, it does have soft keying, so when you push key here, I'll just show you the light flash, where is it? When you push key, it actually sends a dot or a dash as per your key press uh, over the serial link, which I thought was kind of cool. And what we're going to do is, uh, by the way, when you start doing stuff, all this gibberish kind of streams up here. I'm, I'm not sure what that is exactly. If someone can tell me, that'd be great. So what I've got here, I've written just a little uh, message here. CQ, CQ, hello, I am Rockmine. And then we'll go send. And it goes, okay, 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 I got that. Yep, right, okay. And then uh, I'll... Stop here, and then I'll push the little call button, and I'll give you a demonstration of that working. Okay, so so the message we typed in was CQ CQ. Hello, I am Rockmite. Uh, just in plain English, by the way, you actually don't need to know Morse code uh, to write that in, which I thought was kind of cool. So we'll push that button. So that was about oh, medium pace, so let's try and see if we can make it go faster or slower. There we go. So there you go, it does actually work, uh, the software works, the microcontroller works, um, if you want to make contacts, yeah, I, two and a half to three watts, that's pretty general for QRP usage anyway. And when you are making this or testing one of these guys, don't forget the dummy load.